fighting love feelings. My name is Olu Shegun Moku Olu. Uh, usually, we teach that men and women should flee fornication. When you look at the story of Joseph, it was understandable what he was dealing with. But there is a problem when what you are fighting is love feeling. You have a feeling for, let's say you are a woman, and in your place of work or somewhere along the line, you notice you are having feelings for another man. And that feeling is being reciprocated. And now the temptation is on to have sex with each other. Now, in that case, what you are fighting is a feeling. In the case of Joseph, it was his master's wife. Physically, that one came and said, sleep with me. And Joseph refused to sleep with her. So, that is pretty clear, even though a lot of people still fall for that. But at least it's pretty clear. And thank God Joseph refused. But what of a situation where what you are now fighting against is not somebody saying, sleep with me. It is a feeling within you that is so strong for somebody you know very clearly. You should not be having such feelings towards that person. You are a young man. You are having a strong feeling for a married woman. Something tells you this is wrong. Something tells you you should not do this. But the feeling is being reciprocated and you don't know how to stop it. You, or you claim you don't know how to stop it. And you are fighting it. You see, so that's a different fight entirely. You are fighting something you can't even see. You are fighting something that is inside of you. It's a different case from when somebody comes to tempt you and says, sleep with me. You can see that person. You can run away. And once you run away, that's it. But you cannot run away from the lust in your own heart. You can't run away from the feelings you have. That feeling is called erotic feeling. Another thing that made that feeling problematic is because that feeling over the years, we have called it love. So what you are saying to yourself is that I'm in love. And how can loving be something wrong? How can loving be something bad? So it's a complicated feeling. I've seen people that really struggle with this feeling. They've adopted all kinds of things. I've seen women who say, ah, I will not go to his department again. But then they run into each other. And before you know it, they were already smooshing. I've seen somebody sit down and say, today, 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 this lady, I will not have anything to do with her. That day they ended up kissing. It's building gradually. And for some, before they could really help it, it has landed in sex. And when it lands in sex, a few things can happen. You can, it can, become, you can become so joined that it now becomes a regular thing and it's no time everybody will know. <laughs> what you don't want people to know, don't do it. Why you do it and hide it, it will not work. Whatever you don't want people to know, don't do it. How much more God whom you cannot hide anything from? And then you are defiling yourself. If you are married doing that, you are defiling your marriage. Your conscience will be damaged. So many people go home with damaged conscience. They see their wife. That's why some men can suddenly be nice. <laughs> he had gone on an official trip and has slept with another person. A lady that they've been having this feeling back and forth. That he said he couldn't help. The lady too couldn't help it. And eventually they felt that this is love. Let's share love. You remember the proverb chapter 7 woman. He said let's solace our love. They call it love. They call adultery love. You call fornication affairs. You say we are having affairs. Say no I'm just involved with that. You are committing sin. You say you are involved. What kind of language is that? But there are people that they got to a point where they really want to break from this feeling, but they are struggling. 
It's a problem for them. They will block the person. They will unblock that person the following morning. Why? What should you do in such situation? How can you fight these feelings? Because you know, I usually say that see, it's easy to simply say flee fornication. Some people, and I'm talking about believers or people who attend church services. If they were not believers now, it's easy. It's just say they are not born again. So what do you expect? But believers. So they've had flee fornication. The marriage bed on defy. They know adultery is a sin. But they can't help it. They do not know how to stop it. They want to stop it. I've seen people call me and say, sir, how do I stop this? I can't get this person out of my mind. <laughs> ah, all right. All right. Let's look at a few scriptures. Huh? Let's look at a few scriptures. If you're a genuine seeker, if, if what you are seeking, I can assure you one thing. If you have that feelings, because there are a lot of things that makes that feeling possible. Close proximity. You see, you must be careful as a man and woman. You must be careful and you must know these things. I wish you can watch our message um, understanding the difference between love and feelings. We explain different kinds of feelings and how they operate. I can't go into those details now, but I'll just mention a few things. You see, we have the feeling of pity, compassion, passion, lust. We have affection, infatuation, crush, erotic feeling, um, excitement. There's also a feeling of excitement. All these feelings are not love. But the one we mostly call love is um, erotic feeling. Sometimes lust is also called love. And some of these feelings that people talk about, they are lost. They are lustful. This feeling, they are lustful. That's why when they end up having sex, I was saying the other time that the first thing could be that they become so close together that they continue to do it. Another thing could be that they will now hate each other. The lady will feel used. They become enemies. Suddenly their eyes clear and, they dis and then you feel bad. You are like, what made me have feelings for this person? How could this person have looked like the best husband that could have married? This kind of a man? And then you say, what came over me? What came over me? I want to show you what came over you. <laughs> so, if you have your Bible, please turn to the book of James chapter 1. And let's look at verse 13. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Verse 14. But every man, please note this language. Every man. That's verse 14. Every man. What is the meaning of every man? Every one of us, male and female. Every man is tempted. When he is drawn away of his own lust and then enticed. I want you to see the, the dynamics of what is going on in your heart. The first thing is that it is your lust that is producing that feeling. You have your own husband. You have your own wife. What is it you are admiring in another person? You are a young lady. You are not married. A married man is the person you claim to have fallen in love with. That is lost in your heart. And that's why that feeling, what does it always lead to? Sex. Sex. Sometimes, what will entice you, the person may be caring. The person may be listening. See, you know there are push factors and pull factors. Maybe in your marriage, things are not going right. Your husband, you don't have his listening ears. He doesn't appreciate you and so on. But here's somebody at, at office. When he sees you every day, wow, you look beautiful. No, 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 no. You're a wonderful woman. You do your job very, very well. Commending you all the time. That is 
You see, that is enticement. Somebody is offering you lift every day. You feel, and over time, you start developing feelings for each other. Because you are always sitting in the car together. Or when you are discussing your personal life with, her, with the opposite sex. Something you are not graced to do. Before you know it, these feelings will begin to develop. So, there is lust in your heart, and then there is enticement. You see, what you are seeing in that man is enticement. That promise of good relationship is enticement. That promise of wonderful sex with her is enticement. That, that thing that makes you feel like, wow, what will it feel like to be in his or her arms? That's enticement. You are being enticed because there is lust in your heart. If that lust was not there, you will not be in this situation at all. And sincerely, many of you enjoy it. I've seen people, they say, sir, what can I do? I want to get out of it. I say, you can't get out of it because you enjoy it. You know the truth, but deliberately you are not willing. See, when you know the truth and you want to disobey, there is no grace for that. You, do you know you can disobey? You are not, you are not, um, you are not saved such that you are not capable of sinning. You, are, you were delivered from sin, from inside, from outside. But you still have your will. And you can decide to obey God or disobey God. Even when there is grace not to sin. So some people enjoy it. He said every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own love. What does the word drawn suggest to you? Gradual. You know that for most of those kind of relationships, all these love feelings you are fighting, it didn't happen just like that. I know there are people that they just went for an event and they met somebody there. And by the time they got home, they couldn't stop thinking about that person. They say, ah, I saw this. Do you have the number of that man we saw? Do you know him? So they start looking for somebody who knows that person, who can give them his or her number. Drawn away. Gradual. Gradual. It, it may start with official duty. You'll be convincing yourself that we are just working now. You start taking food for a married man to the office. You say, what is there in being kind? <laughs> it's going gradual. It may just be hug. Say, ah, what is there in hugging somebody? But you know in your heart, you enjoy that hug. You know that hug wasn't ordinary. From that hug one day, Peck will be added to it. And then what is there in pecking? Did the Bible not say that we should greet each other with a holy kiss? What if we can greet each other with a holy kiss? How much more? What is in peck? And then one day from peck, you just hold each other and look at each other like this. And then the next thing you close eyes. As you close your eyes, you stretch mouth. Stretch mouth. <laughs> And then hand begin to flow. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6, the Bible says, He that toucheth her shall not be innocent. But you begin to now say to yourself, It's just touching. It's just touching. See, you want, okay. Then you put your hand like this, you bring it out for him to suck. You too, as a brother, eh? you slip your hand from under. You go up in the office. In the car, when you want to change gear, your hand is on her leg. I see her leg is the leg transmission, Andrew. Slowly, it begins to happen. And I will show you again with another scripture of his own loss and enticed. Look at verse 15. Then, can you see issue of timing? Then, when lust has conceived, it bringeth for sin. So what is the next stage? You become bold. One day you become bold. You, you shift your pants. It comes inside. Boldly. And you, you both express love 
Oh, how I've looked forward to this day with you. Wow, you are great. I so much love you. Oh, you are everything to me. What has happened? Sin had conceived. It's a process. He said, then, then, then. Look at the word then. When lost had conceived, he bring it for sin. That feeling will ultimately produce sin. That's what the Bible is saying. That feeling, if you don't deal with it, it will lead to sin. And many of you who have been in that situation, you know it. Some of you, you were very disciplined as a woman. You were very disciplined. But then he begins to touch your bum bum. Say, ah, ah, that is not for you. It's another person. A man you should slap. He says, it's not for you. It's another person. You see that he hugs you from the back. Eh? He hugs you from the back. Is that how to hug? He brings it for sin. Kissing becomes normal. The way you don't kiss your spouse, you begin to kiss each other like that. Young girl, you know it. You say, ah, this, is, this is not right. You go to bed every night thinking it is not right. Until one weekend he invites you over. You keep saying to yourself, it's not right. Even though he's been fondling with your breast. Even though he's been putting his hand inside of you. You keep saying, this is not right. But then he invites you to his place. You walk there with your own leg. And eventually something just says to you. You've been doing it after all. You, he has done almost everything. So why would you keep saying no? Do you want to lose a caring man like this? I remember a young lady. Who sings in a choir? She was having a, a, a adultery with uh, the choir master. And uh, she was telling me, she said, Sir, this man is the dream of every woman. Ha! How can you say another man's husband is the dream of any woman? A man that is committing adultery with you, as in they were having sex everywhere. Choir master, married with kids, with a young single girl. He is destroying you. He will never marry you. He will never do anything with you. At the end of the day, he goes back to his wife. You are a nobody. That's why he's hiding you. He will put his wife's picture there. But you, you are a nobody. You are just for dis the, uh, disposables. You are, you, are, you are a waste basket. When he needs to throw away certain things, he just dump it there. You are, you are disposable. How can you say a man that is married Choir master is the dream of any man, every, any, every, every woman. How many women want to marry an adulterer, an unfaithful man? That's not the dream of every woman. But she had convinced herself. So she goes there. She goes to his house. And she convinces herself. And then they start. And then becomes regular. So you see phone calls like, so when do I see you today? It's not seen. They are negotiating time for sex, for adultery, for fornication. Then you begin, you don't visit when it is your period. When it is your period, you know that. So you don't. So when he says come tomorrow, you know you are on. So he says, ah, tomorrow you'll be busy. It's not that you'll be busy. It's because you are menstruating. So you won't go. But then you now say, okay, uh, can I come by Friday? You know by Friday, everything has stopped. And when you want to go, the bra you will wear, the pants you will wear under. Maybe you have some pants that are torn. You used to wear it. But because you want to visit him now, you will make sure you don't wear those pants. Why are you so concerned about underwear? Are you going for checkup? That's already a sign. You were going to do something sinful. But look at the way it started. It could start with a small eye contact. A casual handshake. A little conversation that you both allow to keep developing, to keep developing your heart until you land in bed. And some it leads to pregnancy. Some it takes them further to fornication, to uh, abortion. Killing a human being and sacrificing blood. And others it can lead to murder. 
Some young women are tempted as kill him. You have access to all his wealth now. As a married man, your conscience is dead. You are not happy, you are sad. Because you have been defiling a young, a young girl that could have been your own daughter. Oh, young girls that you should help up in life. You should raise them up for God. You can only raise them for an hotel to sleep with them. Young girls that need help, you cannot, you can't give them, you can't give them one dollar until you sleep with them. You cannot simply help them. You can't pay their school fees and say, take, go and buy provision and make sure you attend fellowship in school and make sure you attend Bible study. God bless you. No. If you want to give her money, she has to come and meet you. And you say, can you come and sit on my leg? Love it when you sit on my leg. Love it. And from sitting on your leg, you slip your hand into her breast. You say, why is your nipple hurt? You are also ready. And she too, she's like, ah, ah, sa, sa. You cannot help. And you have daughters yourself. You have daughters. Can you allow any man to, will you be happy if any man does that to your own daughter? This lady cannot pay her house rent. But you must sleep with her first. If that is the way God treats you, ah, if God will treat us the way we treat people, I don't think there will be any woman beyond that. Pure wickedness. But look at it. He says, when it is finished, I'm reading verse 15 of that James chapter 1. When, that's when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. Both physically and spiritually. Some of you can no longer pray. Some of you can no longer read your Bible. Some of you can no longer even go to church. You find it difficult. You cannot pray at all. Because of what you are doing. Death has set in. It could be death of killing another person through abortion. Or even killing one another. It could be death of you dying also prematurely. Because some of you don't know that the people you are sleeping with is not everybody that is human being. Oh, let me prove this to you. You remember the young girl that said to Paul, these are the people that come to show us the way of the Lord. Did you know that some guys may be dating that girl and sleeping with her? Not knowing they are sleeping with demon. <laughs> you are cutting your own life short. Sin cuts a life short. It's a reality. Don't take the mercy of God for granted. What should you then do? Repent of your sin. Let me read something to you in Genesis. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis 4, 6. Look at what God said to the Cain. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought? And why is thy countenance falling? If thou hast dost well, shall thou not be accepted? In, and if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. God was teaching Cain how to deal with sin. That there is a time when sin is at the door. There is a time when sin is allowed to come in. The question is, do you allow it to come in? When that inordinate affection started, did you not nurse it? You fatalized it with chats. You fatalized it with phone calls. You fatalized it spending time together. You fatalized it by exchange of gifts. You fatalized it by the gift of money. You fatalized it by cooking for him. You fatalized it in secrecy. Before you get home, you delete all those messages so that your spouse does not see them. You were fatalizing sin. He said, he's at the door. So don't allow it to come in. 
So you see the process. There is lust. There is enticement. It leads to sin. It leads to death. So what should you do? You deal with it at the level of that lust. How can you deal with that? Galatians chapter 5. And verse 24. Galatians chapter 5. Sorry, chapter 5. Let's look at verse... I'm not sure if it's verse 24. Yes, it's verse 24. Look at what it says. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Hallelujah. See the solution? is Jesus. There is power in Christ to crucify that flesh and its lust. That lust. Jesus can deal with it. In fact, the cross of Jesus has dealt with it. They, so the issue is, are you in Christ? They, they that are Christ, they that belong to Christ, you know the problem? You do not belong to Jesus. You are not living for Jesus. Your life is not about Jesus. If your life was about Jesus, you would not have tolerated that lust in your heart. You would not have tolerated all of those little, little compromises that led to sin. The day that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the lust, with the affections. Affections. Look at what it says. Affections. Lost. That's what we are dealing with. Those things that drives you towards sin. That feeling. Did you know that feeling? Young lady, that feeling for a married man is lost. Sir, that feeling for another woman is lost. Madam, that feeling for another woman's husband is lost. You are calling it love. He's lost. I can't help it. I love him so much. You don't love him. He's lost. But Jesus will take care of you if you will repent today. I say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Set me free. I want this to die. I'm telling you, if you mean that and pray sincerely, even if you are already struggling with that feeling before you began to watch this video, before this video ends, that feeling is terminated in the name of Jesus. If you truly want it, because some people enjoy it and they don't want to stop. But I know such is not you. I know you want to please Jesus. I know you want to reign with Jesus in eternity. I know you don't want to burn in the lake of fire. So cry to him today. Say, Lord Jesus, let your cross affect today my affections and my lust. Sanctify me on the inside. Make me pure on the inside. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you need uh, counseling, if you need counseling, if you just want to interact with us, you can please go to uh, the description below. If you are watching it on our YouTube channel, you will see our web address, phone number, email address. Um, all our social media handles, they are all available. Uh, they are all available there. Please use it to contact us or to interact us. If you are single, you want to learn about marriage. If you are married, you want to understand marriage to avoid all these feelings. Our free marriage course is also available. Check the description below and please feel free to enroll. It's completely free. My name again is Olu Shegun Moku Olu. God bless you.